Good evening everybody, welcome to the studio this evening and we're doing some more on this train if I can actually get this camera to sit still where I want it to be. Turn that up a bit. Just tightening the clamp. It's holding the camera in place. I'll try and hold the camera in place. There we go. Right. So I did that. One or two little tiny bits last time, but mainly mainly that. Practicing just getting a really smooth transition. And it sort of succeeded. Took a while to do. And it probably wants to be darker still, but uh, we'll leave it for the moment. Now yeah, then, the problem with all of this is there's a heck of a lot of, well, I quite often call them greebles, but which is sort of miscellaneous sticky out bits on things. Uh, but it's really pipes and stuff like that. And I don't really know how much, well, I kind of don't have much choice don't really want to do a lot of detail but I kind of don't really have a lot of choice in doing it ah well let's just start and we'll see how far we get oops the oops was glasses I do keep forgetting something One of these days I will remember absolutely everything. Just not today. Uh, I'll put the glasses away. Hmm. Feels like I've got something in there. There we go. I can see a little bit better now. Right. Uh, let's do something with the wheels. Yeah, let's do something with the wheels. No, you can just stay there until the end of this session, thank you. That was just a pop-up about installing some software. Which I will do after the stream. Some video editing software. I want to see how long a project it will allow me to create. Because what I want to do is time lapse some of the stuff like this uh, and squeeze it down into about 30 minutes. Now some of these things are about 18 20 hours long and some video software will let me put that much on the timeline. Just Jessup, good evening and Welcome to the studio this evening. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just uh, I'm looking at the OBS broadcast window and actually wondering if my voice is out of sync. It looks like it slightly. Good evening, just Jessup. Yeah then. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at all the detail on here, just wondering how on earth to actually start even going about it. Which is why I'm doing the wheels. Because <laughs> I'm avoiding doing it. Uh, avoidance technique. Um, 
do something different. It works because eventually you do something different. Eventually you find out you've actually done what it was that you were trying to avoid doing. And they're basically just a lot of rust, yeah. <clears throat> Yes, very slightly. <coughs> yeah, I think I... Oh, I have to think, yeah. Okay, I may have to do something about that. It's eating here. Almost impossible to tell. Well, that doesn't help. I don't... Hmm. I don't think the cutting out is me. I'm not dropping anything. Um, I shouldn't be overloading anything. I'm not overloading the microphone. And there should be constant sound because there's music playing in the background. But usually our video uh, will cut out first. Fuffy Twiglet, good evening, welcome. Sorry, it's still more train. When I've done this, I'll move on and do something different. But uh, I kind of just want to finish this practice piece off and do a bit more practice. Right, we're sitting that on the rail. Right, so hmm. train. <laughs> uh, engine to be technical it's an engine. Because the train has got things behind it. Hmm also known as a consist. I've been watching too much train simulator. I'm starting to learn <clears throat> I'm starting to learn all these terms. Paint what you see, not what you think. Which is basically a reminder to me that that's... If I try and paint the wheel flange, which is what I was trying to do there, it doesn't look like what I was doing. One of the things I want to practice with this is speed. I want to speed up how quickly I do these uh, pictures because I'm spending 20 to 30 hours doing one. It really would be nice to be able to do that a bit faster. Wheel's not round. Never mind.
So how's everybody's weekend been? I have spent the weekend doing what I spent last weekend doing, which is packing up stuff. Which is not the most enjoyable of things to do at a weekend, but it um, is extremely useful. As it's um, making space for more studio space. More studio space means I get to be able to do more things on stream. So once I have more studio space, it should in theory be possible for me to do some of the rotary stuff. Uh, like rotary carving. And also um, engraving. I may even be able to do airbrushing as well. See the in-laws uh, and work. Yeah, well. You like doing both of those. <laughs> uh, sounds like a good weekend for you, um, Fluffy Twiggler. here I can actually get quite, quite fine detail out of this shed making it quite a useful all-around tool so I'm just using the tip Again, there it really is just a case of a little bit of black. Okay, we'll do the back wheels. So now I've got to do these wheels, the inside of the wheels. So this is really just a case of darkening the inner area a little bit. So that the outer bit stands out like that. Probably needs to be a bit thinner, but. That's detail.
and that's not bad so I do the same thing again on this middle wheel Aldel H hey good afternoon welcome to the studio again this evening nice to see you back almost sounds like something you say to people that you don't like nice to see you back implying that they've turned around and they're going away from you Again, this one here. Oops, there is it. That was a bit of a too dark a mark than I wanted. the back there these back wheels it's almost impossible to see that sort of pattern but we'll just do a little bit of um, hinting of it But they've actually drawn wrong because it should be about as high as that is that the angles aren't quite right there uh, right i'm just going to swap pen for a little bit so i'll turn the heat right down because this other pen heats up really quickly and i'm just going to put an outline uh, shadow it's in a couple of these places around here And this pen allows me to get quite sharp lines uh, with a little bit more control than the uh, the other one does. You can get sharp lines out of it, but um, this one is more pen-like or pencil-like. Which makes it a little bit easier to use. that okay that one's good enough let's do this one the same and i can correct the odd sort of slight image mistake here for example the coloring was slightly off there as it happens I can mask it with this uh, dark colour I'm now putting in and I can adjust the outline which is slightly off as well Uh, 
Well, this one is barely hinted at, really. Quite a dim. Almost the same colour. The lighting is such that you can hardly see it. Does it smell burned? We no. Um, I'm not well. Not actually burning anything. It's more like a cooking effect, but um, you can smell warm wood. Very much like if you uh, w went into, or you've got a wooden wall, shed, something like that, fence, which has got the sun on it, and it's been really heated up. You get like a warm wood smell, um, and that's I, that's what I can smell here. If I um, if I apply enough heat, that's you know the darker tones, the lighter tones. There's next to no smell at all. And luckily, um, luckily I, I find the smell relatively pleasant anyway, even uh, on the occasions where I do make it dark enough to actually cause um, a wood smell, a, a burning wood smell. Pins now, I'm gonna do another bit. So back to this other one, turn up the heat. Let's do a little bit of the fuel tank, which is this area here. the fuel tank there. That's probably... I have no idea what that is. No point in me even guessing what that component is there. Because I don't have the Faintest clue. Only when I'm making wood, um, this level of darkness or, or slightly darker Alder H do you tend to get a smell out of the wood. Um, if I was using um, a soldering iron style tool, which is considerably hotter than this, then I'm more likely to get this, you know, get the smell because uh, you do tend to char the wood a little bit. But this. I'm hardly getting any even even at this level of darkness. All the time with this I keep having to thinking almost in reverse the white areas I can't change um, so I've got to sort of think think backwards they're going to be white therefore I have to leave them untouched <laughs> 
No, not at all. Well, I suppose it really depends on, on quite how you like the smell of burnt wood. Um, or bur burnt wood, LLH. I mean, for, for some people, if they've got things like asthma, for example, uh, whether they like the smell or not, they, it can affect their breathing, so... One thing as well, uh, LDLH, different woods smell differently. Uh, hardboard here is an engineered wood. Um, it has a different smell, for example, to um, uh, to pine or to um, birch plywood. And I imagine there are some um, some woods that are quite aromatic when they're heated as well. So. And typically, some some wood some woods are actually burnt for their smell. So, um, I guess if you're pyrographying on those, you get the smell.
actually that's not so bad that's acting more like a reflection so we'll keep on doing that <coughs> this is one of those situations where black looks white is down to the reflections that caused that and that's virtually white all across the top there but we'll then do a black line right across the top small area there which goes roughly yeah okay Oh, well, it's getting hot. Okay, old LH, have a good lunchtime. See you later. No. Uh, Lou Jim Brew. I won't. Why on earth would I want to do that? Well, that's just too bad then, isn't it?
that's the thing there. That's the thing. You've got a black area just behind there. Okay. So I'm looking at this and I'm just filling in odd, odd areas because the, the whole lot is quite a complex series of pipes and things. So what I'm just doing is, is filling in shapes. Ultimately, that will simplify um, what it is I'm looking at. And then the detail that I want will will be want to add if I want to add any will be a lot simpler to add afterwards because there'll be a lot less um, to add. Yeah, it's almost as dark as. So it's one way if you if you're looking at things and thinking that they're too complex to be able to to draw or to paint. Just do just do what you can see, and then they and just it's almost like chipping away at it, and eventually. Uh, the complexity will disappear. Let's turn the heat down a little bit. be darker than that so I'll just make that stand out a little bit more It's going to go away roughly over to about where that wheel is, so around about there.
just slightly indent it in respect to that, okay, but it is darker. Lighter than that, darker than that, okay. So somewhere a little bit darker than that tone will do it. Into about that position there. That's too light for that area. So I'll just tighten that down. I wonder if it'd be close to, but not quite the same as that. Looks better. Um, I've got a dark area here. I'll have to extend that out a little bit. Let's take that out halfway. Okay, the proportions on this drawing are slightly off. But it's a bit late to do anything about that now. So I won't bother. You see the wheel placing and the axle placings are not quite right. Okay. I'm trying to learn a little bit about how to do here is to do some of this stuff sort of in one go. To arrive at final town with one pass of the tool rather than having to go backwards and forwards over it. Let's 
That's in the black area there, and so at the end. Yeah, possibly do just that. Do is create a shadow line there, and that shadow line will help distinguish the edge. towards there wants to be really dark if I can. It's about this point, LDLH, where you will, um, oh, I do smell the wood. And that's just purely because I'm making it so dark. blocks hmm yeah definitely got the proportions off on this but never mind So this has been both pyrography practice and drawing practice. I'm going to simplify this and just go black all the way across there. Actually, it might be easier to do that using the other pen. Let's see. Because I'm use this other pen more like a pencil. It's also potentially more difficult and it's a bit like trying to colour in um, a space using the point of a very sharp pencil. Uh, colouring in is quite difficult. Okay, I can turn this over a bit. to go quite dark so if 
it goes uh, darker than I intended because the heat's up, not a problem. So what using this pen might do is create, because um, I'm using it to really darken the wood and it, and it becomes quite plastic does the wood when it gets really dark like this. It will potentially add some sort of surface texture in as I'm touching the, um, the pen down. It tends to push the wood out of the way. Now that surface texture will reflect light in odd ways and will actually sort of reflect light as though there's detail in there that actually isn't there. It's a little bit more heat even. I'm looking to practice doing this as with a little bit of speed.
I'm coming into about there. completely black. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Well, I can tell Junior's not around because if he was, he would have squeaked back at me then. As that pen is getting a little bit hot at that temperature, what I'm going to do is switch it out to this one. I'm going to turn this one up quite a bit. And we'll see if we can work with this one at this high temperature, or higher temperature. So do we get this um, black? Hot up if we can. There we go. Or rather, I can get hotter, so I will.
And of course, since this is a larger nib, we do get larger areas filled in more quickly. That's not been too bad. Mm. I'm wondering what what proportion. I guess it's I guess it's that beam there that I've got out of proportion. Oh well. Oh. See how it goes. So if I come down to about there. I guess the area uh, again, an area. Um, it's an area where I was drawing what I think rather than I can what I can see, and of course it's a bit taller than than I. Uh, I've seen, so I've not drawn it, I've not done it right, but hence the point of practice.
down let's get the other pen back out so I can use it for drawing goes from to about there. And then essentially that goes black. Go the rest of that black underneath there, okay. Switch pens, turn it back up. So I'm just drawing some outlines there of a couple of sort of lighter elements. Essentially just reflections of something. Um, So 
So we'll just add it, uh, add a little detail into the uh, into the black area. Using such a hot uh, tool underneath the heel, because I'm using mainly the, the tip here of the tool. Underneath the, the heel, the wood is actually yellowing slightly, which is actually quite a good effect in this particular case because it stops the these these highlight areas being too white. Essentially it saves me the trouble of going over them again and applying uh, a little bit of shade to them. to that end because I do want to put some steps in so I'm going to stop that short okay Quite nice for once not to have to worry about uh, if the tool touches down and the ends too hot creating black marks because I want this to be black. In fact in this particular case the problem is more about it not being black enough than actually going black.
Yeah, they need a bit of shading on them. They're, they're too white at the moment, but we'll do that afterwards. Those highlight areas. And they're effectively just light reflecting, sky reflecting off of black, black pipe areas. Um, so they need to be darker than that, they're too bright. What I'll do is turn the heat down on the tool and then we'll colour them a bit more slowly than this would. When you're actually making the wood this dark, one of the things you problems you can come across is that the fact that you, you well all the colouring is effectively drawing like sap or the internal liquid of the cells, wood cells out onto the surface. And that is sticky and sometimes the tool will actually sort of stick. Um, which may or may not be what you're after. Uh, and that can actually change the surface texture as well as making an area darker than you might want it to do. Even though I am making it really dark, there are variations in that. It's actually that liquid, it's kind of like um, 
the glaze which makes it sort of shiny a lot of this wood is itself shiny so it does have any I mean, it does make um, make it look more shiny than it would otherwise but uh, the darker the darker the more shiny it becomes right so we turn this temperature down and cool that tip off and then we'll make these less um, less white In fact, I'm going to get a piece of paper. I'm going to clean that tip of that, to clean the tip of that tool. Have to be a little bit careful doing this on on the piece of work because the heat will actually go through or can go through and uh, and brown the wood but hmm, it's cleaner than I thought it was as you can see it's hot but it's not burning the paper 3d bloke good evening and welcome I'll turn it up a bit. and I gather your um, has your new PC arrived Or have you just been um, considering streaming your Xbox? Oh, so that's why you're wishing it was Monday. <laughs> I was wondering, I thought maybe it arrived and you were wishing it was Monday so you could actually stream. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Some, sometimes when I've got stuff on order, I'll do the same thing. Um, I was about to say, why why do you need to um, delay the, the cams and mic to match the capture? But then I guess uh, it has to do with things like reaction to uh, to things, isn't it, on screen? If they if they're not either synchronized or very close, then uh, you'll be um, we'll be hearing the uh, um, protestations of death before we actually see you die.
two seconds. Wow. <laughs> uh, I didn't uh, didn't realise the um, uh, Elgato was that far behind. Yeah, a long time to process then if uh, in its pipeline if it's two seconds mind you i guess there's the stream there's, there's the usb delay but yeah no, it, i guess you're using the exploit aren't you for that Yeah, and it's uh, what's uh, USB two is about twelve megs, isn't it? Twelve megabits, mind you. That's that's pushing it, I guess. And yeah, I was about I was about to say. I mean, the the camera I'm running is um, obviously running over USB two, and the mic is as well. Um, but they are slightly out of sync, so... <laughs> that one doesn't want to be quite as... Now that one is bright white, so we'll leave that as it is. This one is a little bit less. That's yellow for some reason, so we'll just dim that off. Let's dim these down a bit more. This is black pretending to be white, these areas. <laughs> there would be with the audio mixer. Hi. And yeah, now that you're capturing with the Elgato, and there's going to be cables all over the place. It's going to be harder for you to move that lot around dirt free. Have you rearranged things so that you don't have to? Um, I just buzz. 
But I say, I suppose all you really need to do is just like, um, and that's for gaming, isn't it? The uh, the other PC. Long USB cables. Hmm. That looks better than I was expecting it to look. Okay, let's put in the steps at the other side. Oh, that's not bad going. Three monitors. It's nice having three monitors, especially if you use them all together. But I guess you are sort of just going to be. Um, it's going to be. F that's going to be fun having two monitors in front of you. And the third one sort of about ten feet that way. <laughs> At least you won't be so bothered about uh, sort of getting overspray on it or anything. <laughs>
Let's fill the rest of that black in. Oh, God, yeah, you've got two monitors. Mm. Two machines, yeah. Oh, dear. I guess you've got you've got an incentive now that you've actually got the two machines. Um, yeah, I was good. That thought just literally crossed my mind. Then you know, it wasn't wasn't that meant to be the streaming machine. Yeah. To be honest, at three, I don't really reckon it would have much of a problem. From what I, from the spec that you were quoting the other night, it um, it should have plenty of power. The worst probably being that you'd have to reduce um, yeah, anti-aliasing or something like that, which seems to take up a lot of power. And of course, if you if you're only streaming at um, 1020, then uh, I don't think you're going to have a lot of problem with uh, with that machine these days. And welcome back, by the way, old LH, old LH. Uh, no, but it's still a fairly decent GPU. Both steps look better at this end than they do on stream, which is unusual for once. Uh, well, that's all. That's that big black area. And now I've got sort of the slightly less black area to do. Um, The work out just how to do some of that or whether to just cheat and just uh, just put some greebles in there and be done with it Well, that's what you got it for uh, free, so you might as, <laughs> might as well get the advantage of it for a while. You know what, I think I'm going to leave deciding what to do underneath there for the next stream rather than doing it now. 
So I think I am going to uh, leave it at this particular point. Surprising how long it takes to fill that area in. I thought that'd be fairly quick. I mean, I've done done a lot of shading on the wheels and some shading in here and filled in in around here that wasn't there before and all this black area which has probably taken the longest time um, it's kind of surprising kind of I was kind of expecting it to take a lot less time than that because with the heat turned up it does go black fairly quickly so I was sort of expecting it to uh, to be you know a 10 minute job and it's not Same with spray painting, isn't it? Free something that looks like it's going to take it doesn't look like it's going to take long, and it suddenly it, it just does. Um, yeah, between that ladder, wants darkening off a bit as well. Axle boxes to go in there. Just get some sort of detail on them. Mm. Ah oh, well. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just a 10 minute job and three hours later you're still doing it. Yeah. Plus when you're kind of in the middle of it, you, you really don't notice how much time you're actually taking. It's only when you add it up afterwards. Um, I think I've spent something like about 40 hours doing this, which is a really long time and shouldn't really, you know, I, I look at it and go, it shouldn't really take that long, but um, I'm out of practice and it's a complex shape and it's, it's, you know, it's a lot of smooth textures, which I'm not really good at, as you can see. Um, and, and, you know, trying to get smooth textures takes an awfully long time, but... Mm. But that's what this is all about, it's a practice piece. And uh, I need more practice. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, it's, uh, as usual, after a stream, it's time for the adverts. There's that one there, most of you I think have taken a look at the shop, but uh, feel free to uh, to pass it on to, uh, to anybody. Um, I think there's some nice things in there. Make good Christmas presents, birthday presents for yourself or for other people. But do remember, it takes time to make them. So if you want anything for Christmas, order it early. And now, of course, it's time for the Twitch advert, which is say if you're not following, please do so. I'd appreciate it, but you don't have to. If you just like the notification, there is Twitter. It's at Art. A tweet goes out when I go live. On the other hand, I'll be here tomorrow night, about 8 p.m. UK, 1900 hours UTC or GMT, whichever you take your pick, or about two hours ago. Apart from that, thank you all, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.